From here at Rupp, you are watching the SEC on ESPN. As Coach Cal continues to work towards their standard with a change in approach, Kaylee. Well, Joe, and just as a lot of schools around the country are shortening their practice time at this point in the college basketball season, Kentucky's have gotten longer. Just as John Calipari told us they would a week ago as his team closed out that win against LSU in what he thought was disappointing fashion. So with those longer practices, Cal doesn't want his team getting tired of the sound of his voice. So by his characterization, he's taking a step back. For matters of the offense, this team is told to look to assistant Kenny Payne when it comes to defense to Tony Barbie. This is all about accountability and empowerment for the players and the staff. Yeah, we visited with him today, Sean. I think it's the right move. At a certain point, you've got to tie their wings on and let them fly. They've got to stand on their own a bit and get it as we are underway from here in Lexington. 13th ranked Kentucky against that Tennessee team that got the best of them three weeks ago. And Tennessee does a nice job isolating the floor in their first match, finding ways to score easy looks. And there is Grant Williams coming off that incredible game, his effort against Georgia when he went for 30, was 10 of 16 shooting. Freshman of the week in the SEC, and at six foot five, we talked about this every game, second in the conference and blocking shots in the conference, and just so strong. He plays so much larger than his frame. Gabriel couldn't connect. We could go against LSU. He was red hot. Got a career high 23. Look at the spacing offensively. Nobody's really posting up on this possession so far. Here's Hubs getting to that place that you mark. Gabriel with his first rebound. He's going to take another go at it for two. Off to the right this time. He showed those numbers in the open as far as the first matchup and what transpired in that game. Where were the advantages for Tennessee? Well, for Rick Barnes, who has done a sensational job taking over this program and rebuilding it back up, defeated them earlier this year in their first meeting. But what he did so well was he spaced out Kentucky, forced them to have to guard one-on-one, -on -one, found mismatches through screens, and then after that, they took Kentucky out of transition. Kentucky was not free in the open floor. Here's a guy that, of course, concerns them. Man out of bio. Monk shot fake. Three ball. Wouldn't stay in. Uh, Bam out of bio. Seven of eight shooting. So you knew they were going to change something. The, the adjustment they made is they're starting to double team him. Williams willing. Fox as Briscoe will reset things here. Through the lane, Fox That's and the Cats are on the board. De'Aaron Fox leads the team in assists, also puts in over 15 a game. Looking for Alexander, it ends up with Hobbs tripped up, and the Cats are running. Monk on the go as he was fouled that time. A good job taking a rare opportunity. Tennessee's really got to value the basketball, limit their turnovers as much as possible because turnovers lead to runouts. And for Kentucky, when you do have those turnovers, that's when you've got to push and play free and try to get to the rim as fast as possible. Kentucky, one of the best transition offenses in college basketball, but as the scout report and as the year progresses, teams come up with an idea of how they can get back and try to take you out of transition and force you to have to play at two speeds. You can't play on full throttle at all times. You've got to downshift and move in a different direction. Gabriel takes a seat. Well, Alexander has had a couple of opportunities where have clean looks underneath. It was a good pass from Williams and that time a good dump down from up top and just unable to handle it both times. And he's been solid. Three turnovers now in the last five games and what he's been delivering to them. 
Alexander played only three minutes in the first meeting. And he is already coming out of this game less than three minutes in. And Coach Barnes is asking him to settle down. It's Robert Hubs, who was the star of that first game. He had 25 against Kentucky. Monk, jumper. And into the hands of Bowen. He pulls up from 16, rattles out, Monk the rebound. Pushes, leaves it for Briscoe. And Hubs is fouled as he tried to finish with the dunk. A great example of what Tennessee does. They get back defensively, and when they recover into the paint, they flare out to the shooters. Look how everybody collapses to the paint. They'll give up an open three, in particular to a player like Briscoe, and then they get out and run. And a nice job in transition. And you've got to take those opportunities when you have them for Tennessee. Now, Tennessee did a nice job getting points off of turnovers. Although that wasn't a turnover, sometimes quick three-point shots that lead to long rebounds are as poor of a possession as a turnover would be. Hub shoots over 83%. He's a team scoring 14.3. Tennessee has lost 13 of his last 15 games against top 15 teams. Of course, they had the signature win for their season back on January 24th against these Cats. Kentucky was number four at the time. Slapped away as they doubled out of Iowa. Great defensive rotation that time by Admiral Schofield. Into the post, Schofield gets it out there. And off the mark that time was Bowden. Well, I think those were the type of shots that Kentucky would feel really comfortable with Tennessee living with. Willis puts it in for three. He made a big three-pointer with about a minute to play against Alabama this past Saturday. And that is Kentucky's first lead early on here. Well, you know, for Kentucky, sometimes we talk so much yeah, about the young guys, we forget about the guys that have been here for a while and bleed blue. Number 35 in white is one of them. And when he gets going from the outside, it's great for their offense. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Ended Kentucky their first conference loss this year. That began the stretch that saw UK lose three of four. A couple wins since to straighten things out, but Florida and South Carolina have been there every step of the way, Sean. Well, I mean, look at Florida right now and what they're doing under Mike White. You know, very impressive win, obviously, against Kentucky. Uh, but I, I think overall they're playing the best basketball of any team in the SEC. Defensively, they are as solid as any group. Obviously, South Carolina hangs its hat on defense. And really outside of Kentucky, the top two teams are older and experienced teams that have gone through SEC battles before. Florida is at Auburn tonight, so we will keep you up to speed on that game. Bowden wouldn't rattle in for him. Fox gets it to Monk. And a long rebound up ahead. Bowden. Offensive. Transition defense. Isaiah Briscoe gets back. And that's a block. And he was moving laterally still to his left was not set and that one should have been two free throws for Tennessee a good effort by Briscoe not taking anything away from him but he, his feet were not set in position Fox we'll go for Fox Schofield tried to save it and it was off of Bam so it'll be Tennessee ball not one offensive rebound so far in this game both teams doing an excellent job securing their defensive glass Here 
There's the look inside. And Adebayo comes down with it. Monk, not bashful. And the bounce goes. That's a great find in transition. A little reverse pivot. Your teammate filling in right behind you. Just hand it off to him and let him go. Start a little slow. And now the run from Kentucky. And Kentucky's done a nice job communicating defensively. Switching through these ball screens. Making sure they're staying attached. But also being in help side position. An offensive foul to send the ball back down to Kentucky. That previous possession, though, Tess, watch this. A little dribble handoff action in transition. Field land as Bristol is driving in. And great shooter's touch by Malik Monk. Averaging 21.7. Top scorer in the SEC. No Calipari coached player has ever averaged more than 21.2 for a season. Stripped away, Schofield got the best of Bam and Abayo that time. The only player maybe in college basketball that has broader shoulders than Bam is Admiral Schofield. Hubs. Well, and that's where Hubs needs to get to. Time and time again, that's where he had success in their first meeting. That mid-range area, catch it with his back to the basket, and then elevate up over the top with soft touch. He had his touch against Kentucky. Told you about that 25-point game. Didn't show up offensively down the stretch against Georgia this past Saturday as Fox got into some traffic there. Schofield. And he couldn't connect. And here comes the speedy there and Fox leaves it for Monk. Pass Turner. Extra pass. Willis. And Hawkins puts it in. Three ball for Dom Hawkins. Schofield answers on the other end. I can't wait to show you that last possession, the great ball movement by Kentucky. They've got to be patient against this defense of Tennessee. The faster the ball moves on the outside, the more seams and gaps they're going to be able to find. Hubs up and That's over definitely. Willis that time. His 100th career game, senior Robert Hubs. Fox, as he will go to the line. Tess, I want to go back two possessions ago and I, and I want to show you Kentucky's ball movement because to me this is just elite level unselfishness. A little shot fake drive the lane. One more, force the defense to come up and great awareness by Willis as the back line stepped up to try to find the shooter in the corner in Hawkins. Guys, that was a perfect example of the Kentucky players listening to the message delivered in their last huddle. As Khaled told him, you've got to move the ball. He said, we don't want ball stoppers. He was happy with what he'd seen from ball movement thus far, but he felt like after the ball was passed, guys were standing around. That was not what you saw in that illustration. Now, there was a key word used today when he was coaching them on offense, and it was confidence. And it's a rebound by Willis there. Briscoe drives. Fox for three. Long rebound into the hands of Kyle Alexander. There's another pass from Alexander that he didn't handle cleanly, Sean. Phillips a little short there. Kentucky's defense has been great though because outside of a couple of possessions they have forced Tennessee to settle for perimeter jump shots which is exactly what you'd want if you're Kentucky. What you want for Tennessee is Alexander to catch the ball. He may have three more baskets if he did cleanly so far in this first half. Willis again stretching him out. The six foot nine senior. about Kentucky's offense right now last couple of three pointers that they've had they have completely collapsed Tennessee's defense off of dribble penetration and then have kicked it out for wide open shooters that time Bumps couldn't connect Willis 
again. Why not? Derek Willis. Three threes for Willis. Eight point lead for Kentucky. And how about a happy Valentine's Day by way of Sean Carter? You're going to hand out your SEC Valentine's Day cards when we come back. Roses, no flowers, but you bring video cards, I understand. Uh, you know, as a kid in school, you always brought the Valentine's Day cards, right? You wanted somebody to feel special. So let's make the SEC feel special. It only gets better <laughs> from here. Bruce Pearl, Avery Johnson, and Ben Hallett, talented young teams that are improving game after game. And even better than I hoped. Mike White and the Florida Gators, a, a much improved team this year. They're focused, they're disciplined at the defensive end. And if you're looking at dynamic duos, in the SEC, that inside-outside combination, the synergy you have to have with a guard and a big. You look at Yate Maiden and J.J. Frazier from Georgia. And then, be mine, the SEC Player of the Year, Sindarius Thornwell so far from South Carolina. Oh, the best two-way player in the conference, and he wants that uh, award to be his. Was that just a heart wipe that they just did? It was. This is America right here. But <laughs> you know what America would want to see a heart wipe to? Not you or I. They want America's Valentine, Kaylee Hartung. You know when you fell in love with your man from South Carolina, we could go tonight. Uh, huge, that was tonight. unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, he was sensational in that yeah, loss, four indeed. overtimes. Went to the free throw line 33 times in one game. 33. Remember I told you about the bench scoring with what happened in Knoxville the first go round when Tennessee was plus 33 in bench scoring. Plus 10 tonight is Kentucky. Well, uh, nine of those have come from Derek Willis. Three for three in the game, all of them coming from beyond the arc, and all of them coming off of great floor spacing and awareness for Kentucky. Cohen cuts it to five. Drive baseline by Monk wouldn't go. I love Valentine's Day. You big Valentine's Day guy? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> it's better than Halloween. I, I loathe. Oh, Halloween. I love Halloween too. I, I, listen, I'm not big into the manufactured over-the-top commercial. Hackneyed holidays. Here's what I, I never like do. Holiday to be a big holiday for me. Here's what I never do on Valentine's Day. What's Go to that? a restaurant. Oh, the whole set menu thing. thing. That's it. The prefix. You got to avoid the prefix. Right? Yeah. Month, three ball. Yes. Look at the quality of three right now that Kentucky shooting them. They're uncontested, wide open looks. Good an answer on the other end. Monk wanted it up ahead. Willis has had the hot hand as Kentucky will settle in. Eight point lead here. The ball around well, and then some contact there with Lou Evans. He'll be charged with the foul. Kelly? Well, guys, what you've seen in Tennessee's last two offensive possessions, they've taken shots, and that was the message out of that last Tennessee huddle. As they said, we got to take it up a notch offensively. Rob Lanier, the assistant coach, looked right at Jordan Bone and said, you've got to stop being afraid of taking shots. We saw him hit one there. That message got across to him. Sure did. Well, the message I've seen from Kentucky so far, Kaylee, has been catch the ball, shoot the ball. 15 of their points have been off of catch and shoot situations. And no surprising, a lot of this has happened with some of their elder players on the floor. Derek Willis just went to the bench, but Hawkins has been out there for a long time as well. They're moving the ball quicker, and they're forcing Tennessee to have to play catch-up defensively. And from the corner is Michael Mulder. And again, Tess, it's a catch-and-shoot situation for Kentucky. Largest lead here for Kentucky. Turner. Wouldn't go into the hands of Malik Monk. Briscoe spins through the lane. And the finish <laughs> from Ben. Ben and a bio. Cats are looking the part, aren't they? Monk. Monk. Oh, Tess. Folks. 
it is getting silly right now for Kentucky. Their ability, they've got Tennessee on their heels defensively right now. It starts with their catch and shoot situation, but when you're driving the lane and the defense has to collapse, how can you forget about putting a body on number three as Bam is able to finish and then once again, the little flip and the finish offensively, the Cats. They're looking good. Say Bruce Pearl on the bubble? I, I don't think Bruce Pearl's on the bubble. I mean, I, I just, I don't think their resume is strong enough. I think some of their losses they have in conference. But yeah, you talk about the Big 12 and the success that they've had. That's part of Coach Seth Greenberg. You're talking about the SEC, the growth and development in this conference. The youthfulness that we see across this conference. They've had some good games, good wins for Auburn. There's been some good wins for some other teams. Uh, but consistency hasn't been there. The consistency we've seen so far, look at the difference in catch and shoot situation. Well, you pointed that out right away as Kentucky has tied a season high with eight first half threes over the last four minutes and 20 seconds. An 18 to three run for Kentucky. And they've assisted on eight of their 10 made field goals in this game. It'll help that time as Williams made his way to the basket. You, know, you look at numbers, and sometimes numbers are just numbers, and you got to let them be. All right, like you can look at the turnover numbers for Tennessee and say they have six turnovers. Yeah, well, Kentucky's only gotten you know five points off of those turnovers. Not a huge differential there. But to me, when you're sharing the basketball, when you're unselfish, you're moving the ball the right way. That's when your assist totals go up. Bowden was fouled, but you saw the defensive effort, by the way, off the inbound. That was a point of emphasis from Coach Cal in practice the past couple days. Thursday night on ESPN, we got a great doubleheader. At 7, you got a Big Ten matchup between Wisconsin and Michigan. Then at 9, Pac-12 action, Utah, and number 7, Oregon. Wisconsin looking to bounce back after the loss to Northwestern on Sunday. How about Northwestern? Starting to get that buzz about... Yes, Dare we say. Coach Greenberg talking about teams on the bubble. I don't think Northwestern's even on the bubble anymore. They got 19 wins. They're 19 and 6. A huge win on the road at Wisconsin. That's the signature win that they were looking for this year. And I, I think Northwestern's dancing. I think they're going to get into the NCAA tournament. You look at their upcoming schedule. They've got to take care of business. But they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. The only thing that Kentucky's done a great job in, they have not allowed Tennessee to get the ball of the logo. We talked about that in the open and how key that was. And lived off that in the first meeting. Bone on the drive, and he was fouled being aggressive there. The foul is on Fox. That's his first and the team's third. That's the Aaron Fox's first foul. Bone, and the Bone struggled in the first matchup against Kentucky, just one of seven from the floor. And his struggles have extended out from beyond the arc as well. He is 0 for 6 from three point land over the last three games. And they need him to kind of re engage offensively. And a couple of 20 point games, including 23 against Vandy. And the numbers he's been putting up in the last couple are not good enough. Gets it in the band. They collapse on him. Extra pass. Drive baseline. Fox. And score it. When you collapse the defense versus either dribble penetration or the pass. That time it was the pass. And then look at the unselfishness. The ball doesn't hit the floor on the reversal. The defense is late and reacting. And De'Aaron Fox able to finish up over the top. Ball reversal and the extra pass has really benefited Kentucky early on tonight. Let's go make another fashion statement too. Changed up the do. And we've seen guys and they talk about the man bun. That's that's not a man bun. Kyle Guy from Virginia. He plays with the man bun. Mm -hmm. Seth Greenberg does not have a man bun. No. <laughs> 
A lot of reflection, no bun. <laughs> Shot fake, boom. Willis steps in now, 15-footer, front rim there, and Bone secures it. Here's Williams, started off hot, and then quieted down as he just tried to get his shoulder into his former high school rival that time. Hawkins Didn't get the runner to go. Williams, that time he got clear. Well, the key there was the pin and seal. He got to his spot first, caught the defense playing on the high side, and a good job flattening it out to the baseline to create that angle for the pin and seal and for Williams to be able to score without the double team coming. Now plays so much bigger than that six foot five frame. He is strong. He is tough. He is physical. Before that, make Tennessee was 0 for its last eight. It is tough to win on the road anywhere, let alone inside this building, if you're not able to make shots. Bone. Good decision by him. They cut it back to 11 and a timeout for Coach Calipari. Tennessee trying to claw back in. ESPN2, you know the way this works. Some of our college announcers are going to do the NBA. NBA guys are going to come do some college game. Dickie V and Bill Walton at 7 o'clock doing Pacers Cavs. It continues throughout the evening. Billis and Doug Collins are going to have Duke and Virginia on ESPN2. You should do a crossover, Farnham, but we should have you do the WWE. That should be your crossover. Hey, I was at the Elimination Chamber on Sunday down in Phoenix. How was it? It was outstanding. Bray Wyatt, your new heavyweight champion. Now, he comes from, he's, he's good pedigree, isn't he? Mike Rotunda. Son. Mike Rotunda. Remember him? Former, well, I grew up in upstate New York. He was an all-time great at Syracuse. He was a great college wrestler at Syracuse. Played a little football there as well. Oh, it was a great time. Took my, took my sons with me. Yeah, good dad right there. Elimination chamber with your boys. <laughs> what do you do in your off Valentine's day? day like what, that, what do you do in your off day? I get on a plane and fly somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Mark. And the three balls keep raining in for Kentucky. Uh, how many times have we seen Malik Monk step right into a handoff and just knock down the three? Nine of 16 from three are the Cats. Crowd didn't like that. When you can space the floor, and when you're unselfish, and when you identify the hot hand, just keep giving it to him. He's feeling it. Number five, Malik Monk. Go ahead, smile. Hoop, so they get crossed over, right? February 15th, we'll take a dozen courtside voices, shake them up, and scatter them over four games. When the association meets, awesome, baby. It's the NBA NCAA crossover. Should be fun to see the crossover. Looking forward to that. Remember what happened back on January 24th and what a difference it is here tonight. The bench scoring for Tennessee was superb when they upset Kentucky in Knoxville. Tonight, the other way. In fact, Schofield had 15, Williams had 13, Turner had 10 that night. Those three have combined for only nine so far in this first half. The other thing, you look at Kentucky's numbers, partner, they're shooting 31% inside the arc and 56% on the outside. They have not done a great job effectively scoring underneath because they haven't had to because they're getting uncontested wide look wide open looks on the outside as the defense collapses. Phillips couldn't get there on the drive. Second chance that time nice was nice Admiral nice Schofield. Schofield. And transition points as well. 12 zip Kentucky there. 
And all of those 12 are three point shots. I and mean, they have just done a nice job being patient in the half court set, taking the wide open look. Humphreys backing down. Big man off the mark. Back to Fox. And here he goes, weaving his way. And Schofield comes down with it. Phillips, the spin. And some contact there as Fox got hit as he was reaching out for the ball. Overall, the quality of shot and the differential between these two teams as far as the, the clean looks that they're getting in their half court, you can't compare so far in the first half. The higher percentage shot, the better looks have been in the uniforms in white, while Tennessee has struggled to find any rhythm and consistency within their offense so far in the first half. 17th foul on Tennessee, so Fox will be at the line, one and one. The other thing to remember down the stretch here in the end of the, as this first half comes to a close, regardless of what Kentucky or Tennessee does here, Kentucky's had problems defending in the second half. Well, that's been, I mean, if you talk about any one constant theme over the last couple weeks, it has been building up leads and watching the other team rally. When you look at the Alabama game, they allowed Alabama to shoot 58% from the floor. 57% in the second half for Florida, 67% uh, rather in the second half for Florida, 63% for LSU. I mean, and, and you keep going back and you see above 50%, above 50%, above 50%. That will be the test for this Kentucky team. How they close out the final 246 of this half, and then can they keep their focus and their effort level up and sustain that for a full 40 minutes, especially at the defensive end of the floor? And Willis were battling for position the there Willis, underneath. The and that'll be Willis's first. Kaylee? Well, guys, with those second half struggles for Kentucky in mind, John Calipari said he spent a lot of time on Sunday really breaking that down, watching tape when this team's up 18, 20, 25. He says the problem for this team has been as much technical as it is mental. So the challenge for them all has been to have a plan so that his players understand how to play with a lead. Two on Fox and said you can just sit there and go crazy when they give up the leader. You can try to figure out why they're doing it. Checking around the program say Phillips is at the line now. He's been struggling a little bit with confidence in recent weeks. Tentative in shooting the ball. The game of basketball, you got to play free. You do. It, it is a flowing game. If you start thinking and over analyzing what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong, all of a sudden it's like paralysis by analysis. And, and when you're th overthinking and you're thinking about should I take the shot or should I not take that shot, don't take the shot. You, you can't think. Willis and how about 10 three pointers in this half for Kentucky and all of them just beautiful looks and unselfish basketball plays we showed you the one where Bam Adebayo got the ball down low on the block and then kicked it out that time it was dribble penetration by Hawkins the defense collapses in forces the long run out to the wing area and Willis has been on fire so far he has nailed all four of his three-point attempts. Turner is trying to find Williams flashing through the lane. You watch this. On the dribble penetration, you're going to see Hawkins pinch in. And as he pinches in, look at where Willis is. He's on the outside, feet set underneath him. It's a long run out for Williams. No chance. That closeout is way too late, too much space. And a nice job by Willis to knock it down. Willis picks up his second. Williams and Williams will be at the line shooting one and one. Or one in the books.
been a great story to see this freshman season of Grant Williams. Coaches rave about his basketball IQ. Well, his academic IQ isn't too shabby either. He was recruited to Ivy League schools. Mom, a NASA engineer down in Houston. Worked on the planning of the International Space Station before it was originally launched. Did your mom do the same thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kidding me? She was making meatballs and brujol and sausage. <laughs> He's a, he's a pleasure to get to talk to and really one of the bright young players in all of the SEC and So is number five in white he is to it 16 points now for Malik Monk That's this, Schofield tried to go up strong and Gabriel fell him. You know, moving without the ball, having awareness of where the open spot is, and Malik Monk doing a better job changing speed, changing direction, a little dribble handoff, and a step in. And again, nobody's really fighting over the screen. You had two guys hugging the screener. Somebody needs to step out and want to defend. And if you don't, Malik Monk is going to kill you. He's got 16 points 14 of those have come in transition and a lot of clean looks in transition but that was a nice job being patient having his feet set underneath him changing speed changing direction to free himself final minute of this high energy first half for Kentucky they have hit 10 three-point shots Monk on the drive gets it over to Adebayo who sends it in 73 dunks on the season for Bam Adebayo. Schofield couldn't get it to go through the lane. Final half minute here. What a good first half for Kentucky. Their unselfishness, their awareness, their focus, their energy levels, exactly what I think John Calipari would want to see out of his team. They've done it for 20. Can they do it for 40? What do you say? I want to back off a little bit, put it on them, let them be responsible for it. Off the side there, Mulder, five seconds to play here. And this will leave 1.7 on the clock the foul with that foul. foul. That's his first the, team's the ability to create space underneath and watch Bam out of bio shape up as his defensive player released off of him the help side was just a step late and a good pass by Malik Monk over the top Solid at the line for Tennessee. And that will finish off a first half that has a 15 point lead. Look at what Malik Funk and Derek Willis have done. Willis has four threes. Stay tuned for Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and Andy Katz for the Alfa Romeo halftime report right after these messages. Watching the SEC on ESPN as Kentucky is looking to avenge that loss at Rocky Top from three weeks ago. Muck with 16, Willis with 12. They beat 47 to 32. Better Decisions is brought to you by PlayStation View. Well, Tess, watch this. It's just an outstanding job. Dribble penetration along the baseline. All five orange jerseys are watching the ball, but what you have on the outside are three options. You kick it out to Fox, he's probably going to drive it right back in, or you swing it quick, and now you force the two backline guys to have to choose who they defend. They leave Hawkins open, able to knock it down. This time, Hawkins drives the middle, collapses the defense. As they pinch in, look at the spacing out by Derek Willis. Movement without the ball. Forces and elongates the run out for Williams, able to knock down the three. Ten three-pointers in the first half for Kentucky. Their season high is 13. 
That is a big, big number, and a lot of those are coming off of unselfish and assists. You look at the scoreboard, you see this big lead at the half here, but this is one of the focuses and points of emphasis for Coach Calvary because opponents over the last eight games in the second half are shooting 55% against Kentucky. They have seen big leads dwindle down. Well, and they've got to change that, and that comes with effort and attention to detail coming out of locker room. Kaylee. Guys, we've well documented those second half struggles that Kentucky has had, particularly defensively. So Cal told me they talked a lot about the importance of transition defense and making the tough rebounds. But he also said, you know, I'm not worried about the first five minutes of this half. It's what is this team doing with seven, eight minutes left in this game when they've got a lead? Now, energy and confidence were two things he demanded of his players coming into this game. He feels like he's gotten both of those. Now we'll see if they can keep it up. And you play with the hot hands, too. And that has been Derek Willis in the first half. Wenyan Gabriel is going to start on the bench. Willis out on the floor to start the second half for Kentucky. Four for four on three-point shooting for Willis. When they met in Knoxville, Tennessee had 18 assists and nine turnovers tonight. Three assists and six turnovers for the Vols. Here they get one to get this second half started. And Bone on the line. It'll be Kentucky ball. And just give it right back. For Tennessee, their focus has to be staying attached to shooters. And yes, you want to collapse and protect your paint, but maybe not as much as we saw in the first half. Briscoe backing down into the paint, ducks under and scores. That's hit by Briscoe. He had 11 points, 11 rebounds, and four assists in a steady effort this past Saturday against Alabama. This his first bucket of the night. But he does have five assists and zero turnovers in the first half. So he, even though he didn't make a field goal, sharing the basketball, being unselfish in the first half, set the table up for his teammates this time, comes out of the break. And I just talked and alluded to the fact that they might not need to collapse as much as they were defensively on dribble penetration. That time, though, when Briscoe gets that deep, Alexander has got to move his feet early and stay a little bit more attached. Cats on the run. Fox couldn't finish, took a tumble. Other end, Bone had to go up high over Van Adebayo. Bone, over his season average, has nine tonight. Briscoe spinning, right hand. As he will head to the line to try to finish it off. So Briscoe out of the break being assertive and finishing now. Spinning off in the first half we saw him spin and kick. That time he spins and finishes. Foul on Robert Hubbs, his first. Great touch high off the glass for number 13. Bowden, 16-footer, front rim didn't have enough. Good hands that time by Fox to keep it going. Here's Monk behind the back. Willis, this time a miss. And, and but it came miss. off. It comes off Schofield and, there, and allows Kentucky to maintain possession. The difference on that shot for Willis versus the ones we saw in the first half, he was drifting. You could see his upper body was leaning to the left. That's where the ball went. His base wasn't underneath him. Fox all the way around. Adebayo went up strong, and the foul was drawn there. What I like about Kentucky's approach so far in the second half has been they, they are not just settling for the three-point shot. You can see, okay, hey, we, we were hot in the first half. We made 10 three-pointers. Let's not completely fall in love with that. In the rules of college basketball, a lot of times they say, love the rim, like the three. Kentucky in the first half loved the three, didn't like the rim quite as much. Van was stripped away there, so tried to bring the ball up.
Tennessee listed as one of those first four out in Lenardi's most recent bracketology. Bone puts it in. And he's playing with some confidence here tonight. You mentioned the first half needing to pick up his scoring. He has done that. The problem is really nobody else has. I haven't seen the production that they've been used to getting from Grant Williams. Risco backing in again, tried to use the glass. Alexander with the rebound. Bone again. As he draws the foul, Kelly. Well, guys, we've talked throughout this game about the fact that John Calipari made the statement he's stepping back a little bit here, allowing his assistant coaches to play bigger roles. And we've seen that through Kenny Payne, given more responsibility with the offense, Tony Barbie with the defense. Kenny Payne is a name. If you talk to any of the NBA players right now who spent time at Kentucky like Carl Anthony Towns, they will tell you how integral he's been to their development. Player development, Kenny Payne's specialty and so much of that has to do with developing that offensive skill for guys we're looking at like Malik Monk and Deer and Fox who scored a ton of points in high school but need to refine that offensive skill well and I think that's the big thing that gets overlooked so often here at Kentucky because there's such a talented pool that comes in every single year but the growth and development of players over their time here as far as who they are and who they will become and I think Kelly you mentioned the one that's the clearest example in Carl Anthony Towns who he was uh, when he walked on campus versus where he was in the middle of January when he dropped the hammer and became the best player in college basketball from January all the way through to the end of the year. Kenny Payne does a great job working with the bigs, not just you know, at, at practice every single day trying to draw the best out of them. Shot clock counting down. Fox helps when you're that fast, doesn't it? Well, and it helps when your teammates are unselfish and moving the ball as quick as they are right now. So Fox with nine. Briscoe took a seat after he picked up his third moments ago. Schofield over at a bio and count it. A good job hitting and sealing Schofield's big shoulders create an angle, but that that last possession. Great kick out, a little hesitation. Williams gets stuck in mud, and there's nobody pinching in and helping underneath. A little hesitation, a little jab step, mini jab step, freezes the defensive player. And if De'Aaron Fox freezes you, the oh, next thing you're oh. going to see is his name because you're going to be looking at his back. Among the fastest players in the country with the ball in his hand. with nine points, six rebounds. 13-point lead for Kentucky. And Humphreys does his job. Well, he does his job because Malik Monk does his. You drive into the middle of the paint again. The defense takes a step two. Now you've got a very easy 12-foot shot for Humphreys. Kentucky's been driving with a purpose in this game test. Slapped away, stolen. Fox on the run. Leaves it for Willis. How about it, Farnham? Derek Willis, every which way. Three balls and a little ladder climb. <laughs> these fans are on their feet, and what they're applauding, though, is the unselfishness, the floor spacing, the awareness in which this Kentucky team is playing with tonight. Stripped away again. Fox feeling it, isn't he? Caps are roaring. Rooks on fire. When you play with defense and you want to get in the stance and you want to defend and you've got speed like the Aaron Fox, you make plays happen. Then you facilitate the second one. Oh, what a beautiful look from behind the camera. And the second one, again, quick hands, De'Aaron Fox out in transition. The Cats 
They're running tonight in rough. Dickie V and Bill Walton doing Pacers Cavs on ESPN. We've got Kentucky's largest lead of the night here. Joe Tessitore, Sean Farnham, Haley Hartung here in Lexington. 16 nothing fast break edge for Kentucky. De'Aaron Fox with two steals moments ago to rev that engine. It's so good, so active defensively with his hands, able to disrupt Tennessee's flow. Tennessee now 10 turnovers on the game, only four assists. It has been a struggle for them to find any rhythm offensively. And what I've liked, what I've seen out of Kentucky is a sustained effort. Now remember, Kaylee, we're talking about Coach Cal at the break, said he didn't care about his first five minutes. We're past the five minute mark. Now we're at that six, seven, and eight mark. This large lead, will they stay focused and stay committed? Schofield flies in, tried to save it, and now a fight for the ball, and it ends up in Fox's hands, tapped ahead, and he'll stay in this direction. It'll be Farnham's four when we come back. The four things you must know about college basketball right now. In particular in the last week, Duke defeats North Carolina in the rivalry game. Grayson Allen continues his hot streak. He has found his rhythm, and so has the Duke Blue Devils as they make their upward climb. Meanwhile, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, they stay undefeated as they disrupt St. Mary's at home, winning by 10 points. Balanced approach once again. Northwestern, we talked about their pivotal win against Wisconsin. I think that cements their NCAA tournament bid, their first ever in school history. And then how about this last night? Our guy. UConn, 100 consecutive victories. Their last loss back in 2014 and interesting Kara Lawson who yeah. I know is watching this game because she's all over the SEC beat but and she's getting ready for the crossover too tomorrow night but she said that Gino and UConn could maybe go for 200 they he didn't go for that. that he no. didn't go for that what was the word Lee, he used he would, again he said she's putting the malocs on him the what is that? that's that's hardcore novelty tan southern Italian dialect for a voodoo reference, like the evil eye or a curse. And Gino busted it out on national TV on Sports Center last night, saying, She's giving me the malooks. I couldn't believe it. I almost fell off the chair. I texted my boy, you know, my mother immigrated to this country from five minutes away from where Gino comes from. That is hardcore dialect right there. I mean, that that was as amazing for me to hear as you telling me about real balsamic vinegar <laughs> from Italy. They had and the using the word dollar bills with his face on it. You use the word viscosity. <laughs> to describe to me balsamic vinegar. Here's somebody who's flowing pretty good tonight, huh? Malik Monk. Twenty-one point lead. Monk has been outstanding. Eighteen points tonight. Averages just over twenty-one. Schofield puts it in. Good turn and face, square the shoulders, elevate up over the top and able to knock it down. Now you mentioned those shoulders. You say he looks like a football player. His brother, of course, was, played in the NFL. Won a Super Bowl with Seattle, O'Brien Schofield. That is outstanding ball movement. And it works again for Willis. You know what I love, though, is that Bam Adebayo is not forcing things in the double team. He's allowing the double team to come and then patiently passing and finding the open man. Trying to get it back to Schofield as he skips it. There's the extra pass now to Bone. And he's had himself a decent night. 15 points for Jordan Bone. Well, if Tennessee is going to make a comeback in this game, they've got to start getting some stops. And that's something they have struggled with all night long. Remember, one of the things we talked about over this recent stretch for Kentucky is the way they go about playing defense down the stretch of games like this. Shot clock winding down as Fox had to launch it up. Well, that time Fox stepped in front of didn't understand that had no awareness that Willis was right there. That pass was intended for Willis for a spot up three, but when Fox got it, he knew he had to space out, and there was just not enough time on the shot clock. Here's Hawkins. Has 
it all working. That kind of night for Kentucky. Up ahead all alone is Schofield. Good look to get to him. Poor recognition defensively as far as getting back. And one of the things for Kentucky is, yeah, they look to run and transition offensively, but they've got to bring that same level of intensity getting back at the defensive end of the floor. Baseline jumper as the big night continues for Monk. He's already hit 20. His 15th 20 plus point game this year. Even more impressive tonight for Malik Monk is he has six rebounds. He had only one rebound in his previous 103 minutes played, and tonight he has six. What's your read on that, Sean? Well, you got to be committed. You got to use that athleticism for the defensive end as well. I mean, I think that's the key word you just used there. Committed, right? Fox was able to tap it as they were trying to get it to Hubs. Of course, the three-way tie atop the SEC standings yeah, includes right the Florida Gators. We will update their night at Auburn when we come back. Update you on this Florida-Auburn game going on right now. Bruce Pearl and his Auburn Tigers trying to remain in contention for an, a an NCAA berth. And Canyon Barry, he's got 23 in this game, staking Florida to a 10-point lead right now. Coming up next, Ohio State and Michigan State. Miles Bridges doing his best Sean Farnham impersonation in warm-ups. They'll tip in about 36 minutes. Tess? I look forward to that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> There are the big three in the SEC. Who do you like best right now, Sean? Well, I think Florida's playing the most consistent basketball, the most committed basketball at both ends of the floor. South Carolina can be a dominating team at the defensive end of the floor, but offensively we've seen them struggle. Clear indication of that a week ago tonight when they finished the first half. 0 for their final 17 shots. For Kentucky, offensively, they're as explosive as any team in the country. Their problem comes their commitment at the defensive end of the floor. That's why I give Florida the edge. Underneath Schofield off the inbounds. And Gabriel, who we haven't seen much of tonight, as Willis had the hot hand early on and got many more minutes, comes up defensively there. And you see the catch and shoot situations tonight. Kentucky so solid. 14 of 23, 39 points. And for the post, bam. Seemingly available when desired. And it's only his third shot attempt on the game, and he has made all three shots. He has not forced his offensive game. Nice yeah. save, but into the hands of Hawkins, and then the foul that time. The Tennessee is just out. Yeah, the Tennessee is just out of rhythm. I mean, they're throwing the ball all over the court now, and then defensively, look at the post position that Bam was able to get so deep underneath, able to finish up over the top. If you, you always say this as, as a rule of thumb, if your big has a foot in the paint, they should get the ball. If they have both feet in the paint, there's no reason not to get them the ball. Bam Adebayo and Grant Williams, high school rivals growing up in North Carolina and playing in the state finals. Williams' team got the best of them that day. And Williams' team got the best of them in the first matchup yes, this sir. year. And Bam's looking for a win against Williams. And right now, first, this, this couple telling, telling statistics that are different from the first meeting. In the meeting in Knoxville, Kentucky turned the ball over 14 times. They have only three turnovers in this game to 16 assists. Here he is again, this time goes outside to Briscoe, who drives, hangs up there on the rim before it drops in. The two-man action that time by Briscoe and Adebayo. This will stay with Tennessee. It's a simple problem to figure out. If you play hard, you share the basketball, you give in to the group. Everything works better. Everything flows better. And for Kentucky, that's been a big part of their success that we've seen so far tonight. And then when you see smiles and laughs on the bench, they're not criticized. No. As it was the case down there at Florida. This is well earned to enjoy this. Kelly, what's up? 
Well, guys, when you think about that last loss for Kentucky at Tennessee, you know, that was the beginning of that four-game skid where they, they lost three of those games, including that Florida game that you were just talking about. And what I was told that that post-game locker room scene for the Kentucky team in Knoxville after that loss, the message was if we don't change, we'll continue to lose. You saw that in the coming weeks, and this team says that was the beginning of a wake-up call. I think we'd all have to sit here and say, Tonight we realized that call, that message was received and change has come. Took a little bit for them to believe what coach was telling them. They had the loss at Tennessee. They had the Kansas game. They had a scratch and claw for overtime with Georgia. And then you know what happened at Florida. But now I think you're starting to see a little more buy-in, Sean. No, the word that he used last week was reboot. Uh, their service call might have came a week late uh, because last week we didn't see a lot of that change as far as what we've seen energy wise out of this group tonight. We didn't see that a week ago in that LSU game. They allowed LSU to get to the rim and have success in the second half. But this one a much better effort overall. Yeah, you saw that assist to turnover ratio tonight 17 3 Kentucky valuing the ball executing well. They talk about the crossover that they're doing in the NBA. You know what yeah. I'm doing on Thursday night? What are you doing Thursday night? Seth Greenberg and I, no play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> now wait, it's every, now, now it on. is every <laughs> analyst's now, dream. Now, hold on a second here, Farty. You're going to hear a lot of Farty come Thursday night. <laughs> now, now, I know my schedule changed a little bit with, with Mr. Musburger moving out to the desert, but you just decided that, hey, listen, Tess is gone, so forget it. We don't need anybody. Basically, Seth and I have made the executive decision that we just don't want a play-by-play -play guy. We don't need a play-by-play -play guy. I, I need J.D., my stats guy, to be next to me, and I'll be good to go. Trust me, the two of you can fill it up plenty fine. Oh. It's going to be fun. Seth's going to be roving around on NARF. I'm going to be sitting at a table all by myself. Is that what oh, we're going to be amazing. It's going to be must-see television. Oh, so dangerous. So, so dangerous. A little push there in the back of Somebody in Bristol Gabriel. thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> going to do a little SEC bracketology when we come back. Kentucky is rolling, and so are we courtside. Is that how you do a promo? That's how you do it. Good luck with it come Thursday, Farney. Presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Malik Monk with 20 points, Willis with 16, and a 72-47 lead here for Kentucky, who sits atop the SEC bracketology by Mr. Lenardi. Well, and I think the good thing for the SEC is the three teams that are a lock right now, and that's Kentucky, Florida, and South Carolina, all of them securing good seeds, which gives an opportunity to advance not just out of the first round, but test into that second weekend. Arkansas has been inconsistent, and Tennessee trying to fight its way in. I think the key for Tennessee has been their strength of schedule overall, in particular in their non-conference. Oh, they've got good losses now. You look at who they've gone up against off the inbound. Adebayo couldn't get it. They have played a very challenging schedule past Tennessee. Of course, they do have the win against Kentucky. Hey, you look at this record overall, 14-11, 500 in conference play right now. Two really good wins. Kansas State came in that Big 12 SEC challenge. A couple of bad losses. And what I would say is this. For Rick Barnes, this team in the preseason was predicted to finish 13th in the SEC. It is clear that they are not going to finish in 13th place as a five-second call comes up in the SEC this year. And that comes from a belief within their own locker room. And that comes from the confidence of their head coach in Rick Barnes. What about opportunity games that lie ahead and got at South Carolina, which would obviously be a big notch on the belt? Well, that's the one that remains. I mean, that is really the signature one. And then after that, you're looking at the SEC tournament in Nashville. You and I will both be there, as well as Kaylee. Looking forward to that, but there'll be opportunities to increase your resume and get better wins there. Stripped away. Briscoe did a nice job on the other end, and now here come the Cats again. Now this has been as dominating a performance. You and I were on Paul Feinbaum earlier, and he said, where is this team at for Kentucky? And 
up until now they were stuck in neutral and what I mean by saying that is that, that some of their deficiencies continued to play out and their deficiencies was what led to those losses allowed teams like LSU to fight back allowed Alabama to fight back tonight you've seen that shift and change a little bit and defensively you've seen the focus and the consistency as Tennessee has not scored now in over the last five minutes we talked about having a tennis a Kentucky team that closes out that gets the lead like they built tonight and then takes care of business there are some startling numbers when you look at Kentucky if you broke things down say into quarters without scoring teams or outscoring teams in what you would say the first three quarters 19.2 to 14.2 but opponents outscoring them 30.3 to 20.7 over the last three wins they've allowed for those teams to close back into games and this time the foul is going to be on Monk as Phillips was looking to break free reminder that Thursday night on ESPN we got the double header with Wisconsin and Michigan then Pac-12 action Utah and Oregon Oregon was able to bounce back and beat USC on Saturday you know, the Big After Ten lost to UCLA. Big Ten race right now is really jumbled up. You know, he, the seeding came out over the weekend on Saturday. You didn't see a Big Ten team in the top four lines. And Michigan State coming up after this game, uh, they're a team that this is the time of year where Tom is those teams usually round into form. And you start to see them go, okay, you know what, they're picking up their play. A good opportunity tonight to try to get a win against Ohio State. Fox is something. Crossover Fox. and the finish. What does that tell us about how the selection committee views Wisconsin? I, I think it, what it views is that it, right now it, it's it's unclear on how they see the Big Ten. And I think what they're telling us is that they don't value the Big Ten as much as maybe in previous years the Big Ten has been valued. And I think part of that comes from the fact you look at teams that can win a national championship that roll off your tongue. In the Pac-12, you've got three teams, Oregon, Arizona, and UCLA. You know, in the ACC, you have three or four teams in the Big 12 people think Kansas and Baylor even though Baylor's hitting a little bit of a rough patch and I don't see that as them making a final four run this year they've had a good season but not a final four run in my book Kansas and Baylor both appeared on that top line when the selection committee had that sneak peek and that's already down exactly and, but and in terms of separating the Pac-12 Sean UCLA had the great comeback win against Oregon Oregon had blasted Arizona and Arizona beat UCLA in their first meeting so how do you separate those teams well I, I think you look at all of them and then you can see why you think they could all make the final four run they all have great wins they have a great they all have great resumes I think right now if you were going to handicap the Pac-12 race I would think that you're looking at Arizona as the clubhouse leader to win the regular season title I think their defense I think Sean Miller's the national coach of the year in college basketball so far getting Alonzo Trier back has made a big difference in giving them another scoring option as they continue to play more comfortable at the offensive end and reintroduce Markkanen who's kind of at times been disengaged at the offensive end of the floor since Trier has come back he is a top flight talent I think Arizona has the push in them to make it to the final four you mentioned Sean Miller there is an interesting Sean Miller connection to this game and with these two coaches Rick Barnes and John Calipari who first met over 30 years ago when they were working a pit basketball camp together Barnes was an assistant at Davidson Calipari was a player at UNC Wilmington but worked in the camp they each had a team at the camp and it was Rick Barnes team who beat Calipari's team in the championship with little kids the best player on Barnes team smart hard playing young kid future pit point guard Sean Miller there you go it all comes full circle well, now doesn't it coach, Barney? coach Barnes was telling us before the game because I was so happy I was running the ball handling clinic in the station and, and everybody was doing such a great job I was like man my group is so good at handling the ball I'm doing a great job as a young coach teaching these kids how to dribble the basketball then he found out later that they were a group that had played together and they were called the Little Panthers <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were handpicked because of their ability to handle the basketball Schofield with the basket uh, let me tell you know you always hear the stories about working your way up and Rick Barnes and John Calipari I mean they were grinding back in the day but at that camp where he coached a young Sean Miller Barnes slept in the pavilion on a high jump mat it was also back in the day 
in Pittsburgh when they were filming the fish that saved Pittsburgh. <laughs> Hello, Dr. J fans. And Schofield will go to the line. Schofield at the line. Or two. John Boutregrass and John Anderson will have Sports Center at night. That follows Ohio State, Michigan State. All the highlights from an active night in college hoops, the NBA, and the NHL. Sports Center at night is after Ohio State, Michigan State, right here on ESPN. How about pitchers and catchers reporting for baseball? That can't be. I mean, is it really? It is. It's that time of year. And 19 inches of snow back in Connecticut on Thursday. Throw on some You're ice not in spring on training. Sunday. You're not, well, they, they don't hold spring training in Connecticut. That's and Anderson. You know, they once did during World War II. They had some indoor action there with travel restrictions. Boston Braves back then used an indoor facility in Wallingford, Connecticut. Farm. There you go. Rocking down Connecticut knowledge. Look at Monk coming back in and getting that rebound. 20 point night for him. Working the glass as well. And Briscoe taps it in. Look, if, if Monk wants to rebound from the guard position like he is tonight, then he's got seven rebounds. And that's his career high to go along with his 20 points. I mean, this is, to me, there, there's games where obviously the, the, the North Carolina game stands out, right? The 47 points. Uh, but for Monk to be a complete player, stay on the glass. It'll make Kentucky a much better team. Quick break. We'll update Notre Dame, B.C. and Florida Auburn when we return. That one. Here it's Kentucky. John Calipari, a streak of 23 straight years with a 20-win season. Coasting towards win number 21. Streaks, the big story in sports. UConn streaking with 100 straight. They asked us earlier, your favorite streaks of note, Sean. I went with the De La Salle High School, not just because it's my alma mater, but because the fact that they have 151 consecutive wins between 1992 and 2004. It's the longest win streak in high school football history. I went with college sports all-time win streak, and that is Trinity Squash winning 252 consecutive matches, Farnham. Coach Paul Asiati a friend of Bill Belichick's, the squash coach at Trinity. He's had him talk to the Patriots about the mentality of winning and sustaining it. And out west in California where we live, we eat squash. Yeah, you don't play squash. You, you get no 250. Idea. That's college sports all-time greatest win streak. 252 consecutive matches won. You're a big squash fan. I am. I play. My daughter plays actively. Can't wait to have a beer and discuss that later. Is squash like tennis at all? Like the, the way you well, it's a sport? racket sport. It's like high speed racket ball. It's a little more skillful than that. Yeah, I got nothing on squash. No, that's it. Keep eating it. I'll keep playing it. <laughs> Thank you. Grillo to pull away from Auburn and Notre Dame and DC in a tight one in Chestnut Hill. Baseline drive here. Lost the ball for a moment, did Phillips, before we're able to secure things. Give me something to look for with Ohio State, Michigan State tonight. Well, I think really it's, it's about Michigan State's ability to dominate and control the paint area. Can they attack the rim? And Miles Bridge is obviously a big part of that for Michigan State uh, and if they can start being that tough physically minded team and consistently be able to do that in the Big Ten they're going to have an opportunity to get some wins down the stretch here. Phillips was fouled on the drive there. Reminder the crossover is coming back tomorrow night on ESPN oh, and ESPN2. Who are you most excited about when you look through the list? It's you got Dickie Phillips, V and Bill and Walton. Yeah, Dickie I mean, V and Bill Walton. Dave Pash. I mean, he's going to be man. exhausted by the end of tomorrow night's game. The amount of times I text him, I mean, what a, what an unbelievable effort consistently done by Mr. Pat. But Phillips that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then you've got the big game, though, Duke and Virginia. 
And Virginia lost to Virginia Tech, and they're trying to establish themselves back. Duke is playing well down the stretch of the season. Five consecutive wins, of course, had the big one against UNC. And Grayson Allen back to what most feel he always should have been. Yeah, and, and as a player, sometimes you got to work through some tough times. Not everything's going to be easy. Uh, and certainly this year has not been an easy year for Grayson Allen. Mass substitutions coming in for Kentucky here. And number 20 is included among them. That's Brad Calipari, son of H.C. And the mom is happy, which means it's a good Valentine's Day. Now the missus was handed bouquet of roses earlier, and that may have been one of the biggest roars here at Rupp tonight. down off the turnover well you saw a lot of what you wanted to see if you were a Kentucky backer tonight you saw a disciplined team you saw a team that maintained their level of focus and maintained their level of effort from the start of the game all the way through now to the finish of it and you got a tough test ahead though Going down to Georgia on Saturday. Georgia team that so many close and tough games have gone against them until this past weekend when this Tennessee team blew a 14-point lead. And J.J. Frazier was sensational the other day against Tennessee. Well, of course, one of those tough losses came right here in this building. Right, overtime. Uh, Brent Musburger's final call and went to overtime. A big shot by Malik Monk to get it there. You know the Mark Fox's team would like to have another crack at it and try to find a way to get a big signature win. A nice effort tonight by the Kentucky Wildcats. And for Tennessee, look, you come on the road and there's a lot of teams that have walked in this building and lost. In fact, John Calipari, well, this partner, has never lost in this building in his tenure during Super Tuesday. He is 16-0 wow. all-time on Super Tuesday. Moving it to 17 and 0 after tonight. That's Brad Woodson with the shot there. And foul is called with 15 seconds remaining. Malik Monk had four three pointers for his 20 point evening. Willis, remember, was four of four in the first half. He finished with 16. For three. Lucas Campbell at the line makes his first. This is a team in Tennessee that Lenardi was listing as the first four out coming into this game. And they will have work to do down the stretch here. At that opportunity game we discussed against South Carolina on the road and then probably going to have to take care of some business in Nashville in the SEC tournament. Kentucky will dribble it out in what has been their most convincing win in a while. And now three straight wins after that tough stretch that started with the upset loss to this Tennessee team. So they avenge what happened back on January 24th. They do so 83 to 58. 45 straight wins at home versus an unranked opponent for Kentucky. Coming up next on ESPN, it's Super Tuesday presented by CenturyLink continuing on as Ohio State takes on Michigan State. For now, let's head back to the guys in the studio. Gentlemen, take it away.